rolling. Welcome to the demo video for the Tektronix 434 storage scope that I'm selling on eBay right now. And here's a look at it. Pull back, there's the case, there's the handle. This is the uh, crash helmet. So what you're buying is this cover. This cover has a nice set of instructions inside how to operate the scope. You're buying this cover and the scope. The power cord is integrated right into the, uh, into the chassis. You don't have to worry about losing it. It's hardwired in. Right now I have the calibrator signal going into channel one and I have nothing going into channel two. The calibrator signal is 600 millivolts at one kilohertz. That's what we're looking at right now. Not getting this probe, by the way. This doesn't belong to me. <laughs> so, sorry about that. You have to supply your own probes. Now I have a, a uh, I have a signal generator off to the side. I'm going to put some some signals into the channels. Okay. So right now. Is get this. get this going. This is a one megahertz sine wave on channel one, and this should be six volts peak to peak or in the two volt per division setting on channel one, and that's about three divisions. I mean, please realize that this is a 1970s era scope, early 70s. Uh, it hasn't been calibrated since about 1982. <laughs> it's been sitting in someone's garage for a very long time. So this isn't going to be like off the shelf, brand new condition. You're going to have to put a little bit of work into this, and I'll explain in a moment. But one of the, one of the things you're going to have to do is is have it calibrated probably if you want to you want to trust your your uh, your readings so the other channel that's two volts per division here and I'm adjusting position up down if I ground so let's put ground there let's put ground here on that channel okay Yeah, I mean, I'll explain about the switches. A lot of these switches are going to need to be cleaned with some kind of um, contact cleaner. The major, major problem with this scope is this selector switch. So this selects either channel 1, or you can alternate channel 1, channel 2, or you can chop channel 1, channel 2, or a channel 2 only, or you can add the two channels together. So the major problem is that it does not lock for channel 1. In fact, it doesn't seem to really select channel one by itself. You're getting some something very much looking like the add function when you press channel one. It doesn't lock. You can go alt or you can go chop. Those seem to work. You can go channel two only. That seems to work. But as far as channel one, so it seems to be some kind of a mechanical problem. And it's a little beyond my ability or desire to troubleshoot and fix right now. I'm assuming if you're buying this, that you're, you're buying this, you're a collector or you, you like old test gear and you're probably gonna have the ability to diagnose this problem and fix it yourself. Uh, it's probably something very minor. Um, but like I said, I, I'm not in a position to get into it myself. So that's going to be on you to, to fix this. Uh, what else can I show you? Um, okay, let's try. Oh, 
going up in frequency. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 10 megahertz right there. And that's as fast as I can make the uh, as fast as I can make it sweep. Right there. Roll back to one. Oh, let's go lower. Let's go to. Ten kilohertz. The other extreme. So that's ten kilohertz. Play with the trigger here, so I can change the slope of the trigger and the trigger level. Trigger on channel one, by the way. I'm not sure how to get it to trigger on channel two, or if it's even possible. It doesn't seem like it's possible, looking at the controls, but maybe there's a way. I, I don't know. I don't have the manual for this, so. It's kind of a little before my time as far as my experience with this kind of a, a scope. Uh, the other thing this has is an analog storage tube so I can, I can store channel one. And remove the signal and it will retain. I can also erase that. Store channel two, erase channel two. There's an enhance button, I'm not sure what enhance does. There's a uh, control, I'm not sure what this control does. It says enhance level. I'm not sure what that does. There's an integrate button. Um, here is the position for your X axis. You can move that left, right. Uh, what else can we do? Low frequency reject. High frequency reject. We're DC coupling for trigger right now. We can AC couple for trigger. Okay, that works. We can invert. Show you this. I will AC couple channel two, and then you can invert. There it is. Not invert. And with limit channel one, which out. This is out five megahertz bandwidth. Out. I had it in before. Okay, uh, last thing I can show you is, uh, oh, it's going to take some doing. I can show you the, oh, the beam finder, there you go. Well, if you had no signal and you weren't triggering and you wanted to know what was what, you hit beam finder. So I think that's everything, although I'm probably forgetting something. But if you're interested in purchasing this scope, you have any questions, please let me know. Send me an, uh, an email through eBay. If you want any additional information in the, and I am able to provide it, I will do so. Um, this is about it though. As you can see, this is working. It's alive. You're getting a trace. It triggers, you can change the um, volts per division on each channel, you can change the sweep. It has potential. If you're able to diagnose and repair this problem with the selector switch, I think you have a pretty good scope on your hands and probably give it a good calibration too. <laughs> and clean clean these switches, but I think you'd have a I think you'd have a good instrument on your hands when you Thank you for watching.